first thing we when we approach the base we combine the gatehouse which also serves as an external TC and you can disconnect it by adding a square foundation and the roof and the TC has been disconnected and the main reason for that is if the raiders destroy your main TC the base cannot be griefed and you can reconnect it by destroying the square foundation and replacing it with triangle floor frames upon entering the gatehouse we already see we have an airlock and this is one of the reasons I like this gatehouse the best another good thing is to prevent you from being door camped is to stick grenades on these on these wooden shutters and then quickly opening them the gren grenades will explode and in most of the times will kill the door camper another thing is here I have placed solar panels and that's because if the raiders make a breach in your compound and you need to full crouch for better aim you can do so by standing on these and adjusting yourself accordingly once we enter the compound we are met by two of six turrets that guard the whole compound and they are placed behind the chain link fence just so they can't be destroyed instantly with the rockets also if you're feeling like to separate your compound in multiple sections you can add chain link doorways in these door frames and that will increase your chances from separating the raiders outside like I said from in multiple sections as you can tell in the compound I have placed large furnaces and low walls like such just in case the compound has been breached and the raiders trying to rush themselves inside the thing is the furnaces are placed like this just so they can't squeeze through and if they do want to go through something either they destroy the furnace or they destroy the stone walls also in the compound we have three combat respawn points with lockers bed and barrels inside them for extra storage kits one of the cool things I liked about build this base was you had like an option to have a shell and in the shell you can put the turrets down and also make an extra layer for raiders to raid because that extra rocket may save your base from being fully raided and give you enough time to protect it and now here's the main entrance on the base we go inside here we also have a nice window just in case we see some unwanted movement in the compound we can go up to the third floor which is our main entrance here on the second floor we have a window for our first shooting floor you pop that window out throw some grenades or shoot some people and it may help you retake your shooting floor upon entering the third and top floor it serves you as a shooting floor providing you with multiple angles inside and outside your compound the doors prevent you from falling through these triangle frames also they prevent from any people laddering up inside them on top of the entering doors we have small box specifically placed for seal kits grenades and water guns in case someone shoots an instant rocket inside your shooting floor and you have lost the ability to move around you have a perfect 360 degree circle around it so you can easily mobilize yourself accordingly here we have a bedroom with a locker and bed and box for necessary utilities such as meds, extra seal kits and like I said grenades and smokes and whatever you need to defend your base. Here we have a nice access to the roof. You can place turrets however you want. I decided to place them like this and also if you place a square, a square tile you can add on top of it a SAM site and point it towards abandoned military base. I personally choose to add two SAM sites and target them for MLRS rockets because two of them easily soak up a full batch of them. 
also it provides you nice angles in case of you being raided or in case you need to defend your base or recover your body now we go downstairs we have two extra drop bo drop boxes or drop barrels in this area we have an extra respawn point with a locker another barrel for meds and here behind the windows we have batteries for our turrets and ev every other necessary electrical device here we have the early game shooting floor providing you with lots of angles and peaks inside and outside your compound this peak specifically helps you to prevent people hugging your base and hiding in the places to surprise you and killing you nice angles if if in case you're wondering how can I not fall through you add these embrasures inwards and they prevent you from falling through we go back inside we go back inside and we drop down to our second floor in our second floor we have our extended loot room you can replace the boxes with barrels or any other deployables or use up the space in a quite different way it's up to you how you want to design the inside of your base we have a mixing table under it a small box and then our industrial electrical or smelting system I will show you how to set it up later on the video here in the core we have our vending machine bunker protecting our main TC also with doors and it's placed like you can easily open those doors close them and protect your TC and it's over nine rockets to raid including the doors we have our tier 3 furnaces and our main storage now let's move on to building this base the base starts out with triangles At the starter base depending on how much materials you have would be about this big before you place the TC place a single door frame because you will need it for TC placement you put it as close as possible to that wooden part of the frame but take your time to placing TC because if you do it the vending machine bunker won't work or you will lose your TC or both there we go and the way you can make sure is if you can still add doors that means you did it right so we upgrade this put doors here but make them face outwards because if you open them with a the vending machine bunker placed you won't be able to close them after right now we carry on with the expansion we upgrade the rest of these foundations and wall this off now we add some shelves for the boxes I add a door frame inside there because once you add the garage door it will act as, as like a small layer of extra honeycomb protecting from this wall being raided so now we add boxes nice and simple so before you add vending machine bunker you make you need to make sure every deployable here has been picked up because you won't be able to flip it around and access the TC after so I'll remove these doors 
and I'll show you. So you open the doors and tuck it in the doorway nice and tight like so and in order to flip the vending machine you need to open it at least once and then you can rotate it and access the TC now you close the doors and you can see you can still open them that's another extra rocket or so and if it's an armored door it's extra extra five rockets or three C4 so now with the deployables if you don't have ladder hatch blueprint yet you can put furnaces down as your temporary jump up I prefer to leave them there because they are not that much in the way after you can place cauldron here or campfire but I prefer cauldron because you can merge it inside the workbench small box here and a sleeping bag like this now if you want to you can add garage doors or any other door that's available to you at any given moment some more extra frames like this and the hatch once we're upstairs we can easily be camped by this place only having a ladder hatch so to fix that we place walls like this and add two more double door frames S seal it off upgrade everything and we place doors like so and now we have airlock this spot I left empty just because later on there will be electric furnaces in here which will I show you how to set up in one triangle so we see we have no jump up and that's easily fixed we just add a triangle half wall and that's an easy jump up So now that our starter base has been finished, we can now work on a little bit of honey honeycomb. So we come down here and we destroy these. But the cru most crucial thing for this base is to upgrade this foundation and this wall to armor, because later on you won't be able to access it. So you put the triangle foundation back and add two more on the outside, like so. And on these areas, we put square foundations. And this will be our footprint for the base and honeycomb of it. So now we can wall it off. And our base has a honeycomb. So now if you want to get upstairs you can just add a triangle, another half wall and we have access to our entrance. Now for the further expansion we do the same, we wall off everything, we put triangles here for another set of shelves for our boxes, we upgrade everything accordingly. 
The material you wish to upgrade your base to is totally up to you. And again, if you don't have ladder hedge blueprint yet, you can just add furnace as a jumper. Totally fine, as long as you can get in and out your base easily. And some garage door. To make another set of airlock, we go up the ladder hatch again. And we expand the base similar as to downstairs. Like so. Here we can add another set of door frame and a garage door. Around this stage your base might have accumulated a certain amount of loot and resources so here you can add the battery. It doesn't matter the medium size or large one and you can add some electric furnaces to help smelt in your ore. So you come here in this empty slot. We add furnace and a storage adapter. Make sure the furnace is behind that small line on that shelf. And you should be able to place a window frame like so. But before you do, make sure you have a barrel or something under underneath. You place a barrel and a storage adapter. And then you place a window. Once the window has been placed, only then you can add the rest of the storage adapters for the furnaces, otherwise it won't work. It takes time to nudge in the electric furnaces, but it is totally doable. Now, once we carry on, we can place a mixing table here. And it will slightly overlap the triangle hatch, but it doesn't interact with the movement. So you can place a small box here, and you can see, it can easily go up and down. But be aware, if you take out the ladder hash, the mixing table will be destroyed. We add a sleeping bag here. And another barrel for extra storage. Like so. Right. Once we are on the top floor, we can start expanding the base a little bit more. So we pull this in. And we put the doorway here. Seal off everything with triangles in here. We put the triangle frame. Like so. Here we can add an extra shelf for the medium batteries. Cover these batteries with a window frame. Same with this battery. It's just so we can protect our valuable electricity once the turrets are set up. So we come out here, we see we have no way up. That's easily solvable. 
so we come down here where the square is the square honeycomb and and at the very end of each square honeycomb we put down the triangle foundation because that will be one of three main entrances up to our base so we hop onto one we add a window we add a single doorway window here or here and we put walls all the way up like this and a wall here and triangle frames also we can put ladder hatch here as well but if you don't have ladder hatch it is easily doable with just ladders place walls and the floor and boom now repeat the same thing on other two remaining sides Now that the pathway is built up to the main entrance bit, the base should look like this. But it's still far from over from being finished. So, to come here, we put a wall and triangles. Another wall and triangle will help you with mobility. Like so. So now that you have your ability to get in and outside your base, that's completely good. You can live off of this for quite some time. But if you still feel vulnerable, you can do doorways like these on wood, like a temporary ones. Because once you get your early game shooting floor up and running, this will be your temporary entrance inside and outside your base. So now that your base looks like this, it's time to build the footprint for the shooting floor. So we start off the main entrance with square, triangle, square, two more triangles, going back with a square, triangle, and another square. 
And if your footprint looks like this, it's all good. Now do it on the remaining two sides. So the footprint looks like this now. Now we start upgrading. So what we want to do is we upgrade these to stone and these squares to sheet metal because they will be crucial for our footprint to be standing steady and strong. Otherwise the roof will collapse if these squares get destroyed. So now when we come to these triangles, we build a half wall higher because that will be needed for the shooting floor and the windows. So we place some half walls and a triangle floor tile on each and every single of these triangles that are close to base. Like so. If it looks like this, you did a perfect job. So now it's time to place double door frame, like so. And it will be our extension of our shooting floor and what will be our turret pod. Here we can add triangle frames for floor grills in case of someone shoots an instant rocket our target gets splash damage by the fire so this should prevent that note that these frames have to be upgraded to sheet metal too because like i said they are going to be crucial for part of our roof so we might need to protect them as much as we can so now we upgrade the rest of the frames to stone and we put some walls on top of those sheet metal door frames. Now repeat the same process on the remaining two sides if your base looks like this. So now, if we come upstairs into our early game shooting floor, time to place some floors and window frames. We're placing triangles here in these empty gaps, and we place window frames like so. You can upgrade everything to stone or any material you prefer the best. Note that these triangles are still stone, so we can upgrade these to sheet metal to prevent some people soft siding, but it's not entirely necessary.
by creating these doorways, we are creating temporary entrance and exit from our base. So I'm upgrading these apart in base on wood. And with just a couple of machetes, we can chop them out and turn them into a window peak. Once that is done, we can seal off the ceiling, the rest of the floor tiles to finish up the early game shooting floor. So now that we have our majority of our shooting floor finished, we need to place some embrasures, especially in these gaps, because you can easily fall through or other people can easily ladder through. So we place them on the inside of the windows, like so. And now you see, I don't fall through, nor I get stuck. And we place here on the outside. Inside, another inside. on outsides. Here in this spot I'm placing a triangle roof piece for a head glitch peak, but if you leave it on default stone skin, the gap gets covered, so if you upgrade it to any other stone skin, you can get a gap which can overlook your base's walls, in case there is some people camping them and trying to surprise them thinking that you don't know, you can't see them. With sheet metal doors added and the final roof triangle pieces built up as well, we add some vertical window embrasures to finish up our early game shooting floor. Now that your base looks like this, nice and symmetrical, you've done an amazing job. So next thing we need to do is to build an airlock on top of this triangle hatch and a bedroom on top of it. And we can do that by placing half walls like such surrounding the inner circle and a low wall which will be an extra drop box storage point. Now that you have built everything like I, like I have, you can upgrade everything on the necessary material you prefer. And in the double doorway you can add armored double doors for nice protection. Upon turning around we see we have these floor tiles that are still left on the wood and those are supposed to be the main entrance so we are gonna build it up and free the doorway later on. So we put two half walls and the triangle roofs like so. Like this. And upgrade this. It's a triangle and a single doorway. And on top of that triangle you can place a small box for which will ha have to contain your necessary materials for sealing the base during raid and grenades for extra defense. And by placing small box like this, it tucks in nice and well and gets hidden behind single doors. And now we can repeat the same process on the remaining other two sides. So we place two half walls 
on top of those we place triangle roofs. Now a triangle shelf and a single doorway. Now a small box for jump and a small box for storage. Now we repeat the same process for the third time. Two hut walls, roof triangles, a shelf and a single doorway. A small box. And a single sheet metal door. Just like that. Moving on to the other triangles, we place two triangle frames, upgrade them to sheet metal, place two full walls on the side, and then we place triangle roofs, and we can do so by climbing here, and just placing them. You need to wiggle them around for a little bit, just so they clip in properly, but it is easily doable. Got a double door frame. And in this frame, we place double sheet metal doors facing inwards or outwards from the base. And if you come into these uh, gaps, you can't fall through, Not, nor anyone can get inside through here. So that's a nice peak for you to have overlooking your compound. And then again, we do the same process again. Two triangle frames on sheet metal. Full walls on side, double door frame for doors, we climb the frames and we place triangle roof like so. Doors in the socket, open them up and boom, another great peak. And one more time, triangle frames, full walls. Climb the frames, a triangle roof, double door frame here, and doors themselves, like so. On top of these window frames, we place another set of window frames for additional peaks, like so. Now we upgrade those as well. Once upgraded, we're gonna create our own top floor bedroom. We place double door frame, which will be our access to our roof. Place hat wall on this one, and then four window frames covering our bedroom. We upgrade these. And then we need to place horizontal embrasures to create an ankle biter peaks on the roof. Like so. And we seal the windows off with glass windows. And now the roof on top of our head, covering our bedroom. To seal off our final shooting floor bit, we place square floors here, and then triangles in the remaining gaps. And this creates nice, fully sealed roof and floor when standing on the roof. Now in every available socket we place double door frames for extra stability which will be needed for our windows to be placed on like so now we can upgrade these and in each of every single double door frames you can spam garage doors if you have the necessary resources In the window part you can place vertical embrasures or just seal them with strengthened glass windows. Great job! Now we have our final shooting floor finished and 
onto the roof we go. Once we go on the rooftop, it is easy to finish, so we just place the triangle roof outwards on every single available spot on the outer ring. And now we upgrade everything. This is our roof finished. Time to place the frames for the windmills to sit on. We do so by taking double door frames in front of our main entrance to the bedroom and we extend it two stories high. Like so. We upgrade these to sheet metal so that they are not easily destroyed. And now we climb them by placing triangle on the side, half floor, and now we can easily jump on. And now we put the floor down. Note that we need to place those windmills slightly more on the left side of that floor. Just because they are so close together, if you place it too much inwards, you would not be able to place the second or the third windmill. So once we place the floor, you place it as close to the left side as you can. Now that we have our windmills down, we have full amount of electricity for necessary turrets and even a samsai. But be aware, we need to put some solar panels down for our smelting system. Now that the roof is finished, we can now get rid of the temporary entrance and create the retake point for our early game shooting floor. And we do so by placing a window frame, horizontal embrasure and a glass window. And on top of those, we need to place a ladder hatch just so we will have the mobility to get on top of the third floor which is our main entrance. You can place turrets as fast as you want on top on the roof, but I prefer like doing it at the very end and I place three of them just to be sure they cover the full roof. The top floor bedroom we can place a locker, a bed and two barrels or as many as you want for extra meds, HV rockets, grenades and seal kits in order to protect yourself and your base from a raid. Now that your base has been finished, it's time to build some combat respawn points and we do so by coming to the main entrance side. And we start off with a triangle, a square and two triangles. Now we need to destroy these twigs, place a square and two more triangles on the side and destroy this triangle. We upgrade everything and it should look like this. Now we place a single doorway here, two windows on the sides, and wall off everything behind us. Two triangle roofs here, and a square here. And this is how big our bedroom is. So now we do 
half walls and triangles on top of them to create peaks back at the compound in case of emergency. Now we place the door down, a locker and a bed for the respawn. Also, we place two more barrels here and on the other side for extra meds, kits, or if necessary for extra storage. And on the windows, we place the horizontal embrasure and a glass window. In order to prevent from the combat respawn to decay, we come from the side of the bed bedroom We place two triangles, square and triangle from the main base. And same on the other side. We place two triangles, a square and a triangle. It doesn't matter from which side as long as you get the necessary spot. So now we connect it with the double door frame. We place a half wall here, a low wall on top of it, we destroy half wall, place the low wall back, upgrade these, and we destroy the twig. Giving us a nice connection. And the reason for them being placed like they are is for when the compound wall are being breached, they will give you nice peaks, but also prevent raiders from rushing in in a free compound. So now we remove the twig. And if it looks like this, you've done an amazing job. By placing these chain link doors, you can prevent raiders from gaining control over all compounds. So the compound will now be split into the six parts, limiting the raiders from mobilizing throughout the whole compound. So now that you have finished building your combat respawn, it's time to work on gatehouses. So we locate where the twig triangles were left during earlier stages of base build. We place a square from those, place a triangle, destroy this twig, and build four more triangles. And if necessary, we destroy the twig here. And now we build out with four more triangles which creates a half moon square and three more triangles for what, where will be our TC so we upgrade this we destroy this twig and a half moon so now we can place our first external TC we do so by placing walls on these sides and two half walls for our disconnectable TCs to work a single door frame here and here. Roofs on top of our heads. And now the TC. And we seal it off with window frame and glass window. And now we have our first external TC up and running. But we still need to connect it to the gatehouse. It's quite simple, so we upgrade the foundations of our gatehouse. We place windows like so. We upgrade everything and we place single doors. Now we place doors facing inwards and that will create our desired airlock, like so. Now we place glass windows here on the outside and horizontal embrasures facing inwards. Now that we have our gatehouse built up, we need to put some barricades on top of it. And we do so, we're placing a triangle twig here, half wall on it, so we can jump on the roof. And we place triangles here. Like so. And we can upgrade this one, despite that not being a triangle frame. Now we place the barricade.
And to addition, we can place low walls here and here. Or if someone tries to jump over it, they get caught in the way. So we place the main wall here and place the remaining two barricades. Like so. Now we destroy the twig. And it should look like that. Now we connect the TC. Note that the floor tile doesn't affect the stability. It has exactly the same stability as the frame. So we connect it back. The triangle frames and the square frame. We upgrade everything. And we have our gatehouse fully secured and connected. Now, for extra peaks and compound, we place triangles on both sides. Back walls. Low walls on top of those. And triangles for extra peaks from the gatehouses back at the compound. If you did it like this, good job. Now you need to repeat the same process on the remaining two sides. Once you have done it, if we come here to this spot and this spot, you try to nudge a large furnace in as close and tight as you can. And don't forget to place it as high as possible as well. This will create a little to no gap to prevent from raiders breaching the compound even if the wood walls are destroyed. So now we need to repeat that process on every possible gap we have in our compound. On a side note, the large furnaces don't affect the placement of barricades on top of the combat respawn, so you can place them by placing triangles on the sides, placing them as f almost as far as you can on the tip of the triangle towards the furnace, just so you would have enough space for the middle barricade. We destroy the twig, and we place the final piece like so. And now we add low wall, just so Anyone who tries to climb over can't place the shelf and jump over the barricades. And if they do, they get caught in between the low wall and the barricade. Now that your compound looks like this, time to place some compound walls down. And it's quite simple. You locate your gatehouse and you go on the left side from it. You get yourself a wood or a high stone wall. And then when you go and place it, you try to align it exactly like your gatehouse entrance is. And luckily, with the new update, you can demolish them if misplaced. And here, if you see, you have a small slight gap. You press and hold shift, so the wall detaches from the other one, and you can get little to almost no gaps at all in your compound, placing it as tight as possible, like so. And there you have it, no gaps in the compound. And this creates a perfect seal from outside world and your compound. And here, on the right side of the gatehouse, you align it with the low wall that's on top of the gatehouse. And again, the wall is a little bit too close to the combat respawn, so you press and hold shift, and you get yourself nice, beautiful compound wall placement with no gaps whatsoever. So now that you have your compound up and running, time to work on the securement. And we do so by placing triangle floor grills on top of every single turret pod we have around in our compound that's connected to our main base. Like so. And then if we come to the turret pods, we can seal them off with a chain link fence on the outside and the chain link gate on the inside so we can refill the ammunition for the turret.
here in these double door frames we can add some double doors for extra securement in case of emergency override. So now again we place the chain link doorway here, we place the turret inside the pod and the chain link fence on the outside guarding the turrets from that extra rocket. If you built your base up like this, you did an amazing job, but we still have three more turrets to place, and I personally prefer to place them in the early game shooting floor on every square honeycomb piece, like so. And this will help you in case of a breach, or the base has a hole in it and there is raiders climbing inside your shooting floor. So now, if you come to the roof, you pick a spot that's towards the abandoned military base. And this is where you want to place your SAM site that's defending your base from being raided with MLRS rockets. And there you go, this is how you build my solo duo fortress. <laughs>